Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Brandon. Welcome to Audio Addiction Week Fine Lace Album Reviews. You can find our band interviews and you can find other musical related content on the channel. I post Monday through Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I do everything uh, pretty much as under the sun as I can think of. Uh, I post a lot of band interviews during the week and a lot of um, musical, like people who do a lot of behind the scenes stuff in the music industry. So, if any of those two things sound interesting to you, uh, thank you for checking out the channel and hopefully you'll check out some more stuff uh, that I have on there as well. But tonight, we're going to be talking about Off Road Minivan's newest record, Swan Dive. <laughs> So for those of you who aren't familiar with this band, um, Tuck uh, from Fit for a King, he uh, decided to do this side project. I don't know which one came first, chicken or the egg, you know, that sort of equation. Um, but he had I had talked to him after I'd done an interview with him for Fit for a King. And I remember not much longer after that, he had started up off-road minivan. And I was just very curious to see how it started. I did check out the first EP. Um, granted, I haven't listened to it in a very long time. And then I was actually approached by Big Picture Media. Shouts to Becky. Uh, she had sent me over this record. And I wanted to give it a listen. I wanted to give it a chance. Um, I've always liked Tuck's vocals, but I have almost always felt that his voice has hasn't really necessarily to me fit fit for a king maybe it's just a certain song or something like that but I was very curious to see if his voice you know more suited this style of music so I'm gonna go through each track give you my thoughts and opinions on it go through some pros and cons and then give it a rating so the first track is called it's hard to make it below third uh this one i really enjoyed a lot i dig the sort of melodically driven intro uh shortly followed by tuck's uh clean vocals which i absolutely think without a doubt throughout this entire record that his voice really suits this style of music which is kind of like a little bit of rock there's a little bit of post hardcore mixed in there uh there's definitely some Im larger emo influences as well um so it kind of covers the gambit of all of those genres kind of you know blending them very well um and again i think his voice really kind of fits with that sort of uh tonality and songwriting in a in a record like this um as well as that, I really love the chorus. That's probably one of my favorite portions of the track. Um, and a good majority of the tracks, uh, reason why I like the tracks the most on the on this record in general is that they've been able to come out with some really fantastic choruses uh, that really soar over um, a lot of these songs. Uh, I love when he kind of belts out those sort of higher notes and just they just land super well again I think his voice suits this sort of style of music um, so it does it does definitely feel like it's in his wheelhouse a little bit more so uh, the instrumentals are really well done as well I think the band that he has created and just like um, whether it be like the you know the three different layers of guitars uh, the bass player bass playing provided by Tuck obviously and then the drumming is really fantastic I think Evan is his name he does a fantastic job uh, doing some awesome drumming throughout this entire record but really enjoyed this probably again one of my favorite parts is is either the second verse I thought the nice kind of like change up in that was very well done or the last chorus of this song I think it hits hits the home the most um, but I I thoroughly enjoyed this track m way more than I probably thought I would enjoy um, but again really solid start to the record and I feel like it will give you kind of a good indication of how the rest of the record kind of transpires so we're gonna move into track number two which is vampire um, this one has a nostalgia to me I don't know whether it's um, just that sort of like early 2000s kind of like classic post hardcore emo um, style of music that they're writing in this but it just to me has that nostalgia tinge to it which I really appreciate <laughs> Um, being the age, the ripe age of 27, um, you know, that was stuff that I grew up listening to and it just feels like influential, 
influence wise it's hard to kind of like pinpoint exactly what bands they draw from um but it does have that sort of like again that nostalgia to it as well uh i really love and evan's drumming in this track i think the way that he's able to kind of incorporate some really cool fills and rhythmic bursts uh throughout the entire uh portion of this song is just beyond me i think he's he really kind of fits in the pocket super well but he knows when to kind of elaborate and do a little bit more extra uh, with the song which I really appreciate um, in a drummer that's able to kind of again hold his own but also know how to kind of you know flex off his skills so he definitely did a great job with that um, I also really enjoy uh, the guitar playing uh, from uh, Miles and Melvin I think they do a really great job of kind of holding it down as well um, and I, I just think that Dave does another really fantastic job too. I couldn't really tell who does the lead, so if anybody actually know who who does the lead guitar work um, on this record, I think would be greatly appreciated because whoever does the leads does a great job. Um, and just be having three guitar players is tough enough. Um, so to have that diversity amongst the three is just really well done. Uh, Tux bass shines, especially in the second verse. Um, I would say along with the chorus, uh, the chorus again is another really impressive feat and I think that a lot of people will enjoy this song just simply based off of the melody that's coming out of the chorus um I don't know if Chuck kind of hits his like falsetto range or like his higher register um but it just sounds phenomenal and it'll have you definitely singing along in no time it's probably one of the catchiest songs off the record and one of my personal favorites I just I would I would definitely say without a doubt it was one that when I was going through my kind of preliminary listens, this one was one that stuck out immediately um, and it has continued to kind of grow on me as I've listened throughout this record. So absolutely would recommend Vampire if you haven't checked that one out already. So we're going to move into track number three, which is Supernova. Uh, I appreciate the sort of melancholy nature of this track uh, in juxtaposition to track number one and track number two. Um, it really kind of sets a different tone. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that they were able to kind of include uh, elements of piano as well that brings sort of the softer side of what off-road minivan does. And I don't feel like it's just like a cheap like cut out like cop out like ah oh, yeah we gotta add like piano. It feels definitely necessary to this song. Um, and I feel like a lot of the sort of structural elements would kind of fall loose if there wasn't. A little bit of piano play in place there as well so um, I like how they kind of center it around some of the piano parts um, and that it feels like it's there to be a portion of the song not just to be like okay we had piano like let's just add it in to just add another depth or another piece of layering to go along with the track it really works uh, and I appreciate that um, I also really like how um, Tuck's vocals cut through this track um, as well I think he just really sings with a lot of conviction a lot of power um, and some songs maybe come across a little bit better um, in terms of that route but I really feel like in this record in general I think he was able to kind of reserve some of his just like really powerful vocals there's definitely some songs where he just you know hits it out of the park with that but I also like that as a vocalist he can show reservation and you know if the song needs it to have that sort of punch to it but not necessarily to go all out all the time um, and to kind of have those softer moments. And I think that, again, compared with the sort of piano aspects of this record, um, it really makes the softer songs just a little bit more like sentimental, a little bit have a little bit more value to them. And I think it's really well executed. Um, I also really appreciate that they, they explore sort of more of the like ambient side of their music. Um, you can kind of hear it in the first two songs, but I would say they're more kind of like rock based, a little bit more post hardcore based, um, a little bit more emo based. Um, it just feels a little bit softer. I mean, it feels a little bit harder. Um, again, more closely assimilated to rock. And so this one feels a little bit more softer, kind of probably closer to indie. Um, and I appreciate that vibe because it's, again, something different uh, and just to kind of juxtaposition you know juxtapose the two songs that preceded this one uh i think is really well done and again really well executed song but i really do feel like the piano brings 
this song in particular together and another important point that i forgot to mention is the bridge of this song is absolutely stellar um and it's something that i feel like really um brings out this song and has that sort of memorable aspect to it because of that awesome bridge so supernova no really great track so we're gonna move on to track number four which is Spiral Gaze. Um, I really like this one track as well. I think this one more specifically to me after multiple listens is more about like the subtle subtleties of this song. Um, the song does start off softer kind of in comparison to uh, Supernova, the one that we just talked about. Um, but as the song kind of moves and as the first chorus kind of passes, um, the song definitely picks up and um, I think that the instrumentals definitely take a little bit more of a step up after this first chorus. Um, Evan's drumming is really well done. Uh, I love the sort of like the way that the song kind of project progresses. His drumming becomes that much better. I love this little inflections that he has in there and those little fills. Um, kind of similar to how much I enjoyed like Vampire, I kind of assimilate that to how much I liked Spiral Gaze, um, just because his drumming ability, the way that he's kind of able to kind of weave in and out of like, you know, keeping in the pocket, but also kind of like doing some really fun, interesting stuff behind the kit, I think is really well executed, um, and well done. Uh, I also really enjoy just the instrumentals in terms of the guitar side. The bass side is a little bit less to be desired, but again, I think when the drumming's going off a little bit, the the guitars are going off a little bit, especially the lead guitar work. Um, I think it's important to have those sort of like solid foundations. So I do feel like Tuck holds it down on the bass for this track. Again, nothing too crazy, but I think it really works with the song. Um, but it all kind of culminates to this bridge that kind of just allows everything to kind of come loose and uh i really appreciate that in the songwriting aspect because it just kind of builds over time and as you get you know further into the song it really works and um i think that it just culminated to like a really beautiful portion and that bridge uh portion of the song really well done really well executed and probably again up there with some of my favorites off of this record so we're going to move it into track number five which is you they just released recently released a music video for this one uh so if you haven't checked it out go do so i believe it is on tooth and nails uh youtube page so go check that out um but this song kind of is hit or miss for me I think in some portions, like when I was listening to it in my car, um, I think it really worked. And then when I went to go sit down to it now to go do the review, uh, it just didn't, I, I wasn't really feeling it as much. I really enjoyed the chorus. I think that was probably the, the, the creme de la creme of this song in particular, um, especially that sort of you melody uh, in the back, I think was really well put together. And I think it kind of just strings along the chorus super well um but i think it's a solid song i think it's written well i don't think there's any too anything too crazy to write home about i think if you appreciate uh the first uh five tracks of this record you're definitely going to appreciate this one um but again not really too much variation uh, a solidly written song um but i feel like it's a little bit safe so we're going to move into track number six which is Swan Dive. I really dig that sort of rhythm of the intro. I think that was really well executed. Um, the lead guitar lines feel a little bit more pronounced in a track like this one, uh, which is definitely sick being the title track of, of the record. Um, really dug that. Uh, sometimes I thought that um, something was, the variations uh, were really interesting, more specifically um, in the first chorus and the second chorus. Uh, with the lyric swan dive I think the way that they were able to accomplish it in the first push uh, the first chorus I think was very interesting um, and I think that in the second chorus I think they do an even better job of kind of accentuating that um, which is an interesting stylistic choice I haven't really heard that from any other band so um, I thought that was very cool to kind of again switch up the lyrics a little bit and switch up the melody to make it more um appealing from start to finish so i really dug this one i thought tuck's 
singing on this track in particular just had this sort of level of conviction to it um and just has that it just makes the song just hit home just a little bit more um and i think that that is what makes this track in particular super strong is because of that sort of just you know that that hard-hitting kind of like emotional vocal backing and i think that it is just done by tuck and i think that um you know a song like this really hits a little bit home hard hits home harder i don't know why I, like somehow messed that up but there you go so we're gonna move into track number seven which is taconic uh, i'm pretty sure i said that right i had listened to the song and i thought that i was going to pronunciate it wrong which i'm glad in hindsight um I didn't mess it up, so shouts to me. But anyway, um, I really like the cool little drum intro thingy uh, done by Evan, uh, followed by some really nice like piano parts. I think that uh, whoever is doing the primary role writing the piano portions of this song or just in this record in general, I think really deserves a lot of credit because um, they're fantastic pianist. But as well as that, I think that the songs really... Uh, especially some of the slower songs that they're doing the piano on, I think lend themselves well to that sort of softer um, performance. And so uh, it just happens to be, you know, it just happens to just work in a song like this. And I think out of all the kind of softer songs, this one is just one of my favorites. Uh, I think that Tuck Vocals uh, is really well done. Uh, I think that, you know, I love the parts where he's able to kind of belt out and be a little bit more powerful. Um, but I think in this track, he kind of does the opposite. Um, he has this sort of warmth to his voice. Um, he doesn't really try to convince you that he's like, oh, I have to sing really powerful to kind of convey a message. Um, this one feels a little bit more softer. It feels like a little bit more emotionally vulnerable. And, you know, I think that especially uh, where he kind of gets into those softer kind of lower register parts in a song. Uh, it just really rings true a little bit more so. Um, and I think that's why I really enjoy this track is just because it, it, it has an emotional uh, value to it. And it doesn't feel like, OK, he's just doing it to kind of, you know, have that emotional thing hit a little bit more. It does feel sincere. And um, and I think that's truly when he hits his stride is when, you know, he's at his most sincere point. And I think in this track in particular, uh was really well done really well conceived and i also feel like the instrumentals really kind of back that sort of mood or tonality to it um so it is again well executed track um one you should definitely go give a listen to so we're gonna move into track number eight which is platinum uh this one has a really distinct groove to it and i think that after every time that i've listened to this record which has been uh i would say collectively between 25 and 30 times now at this point um you know this song kind of sticks out to me and every time that i had one to go listen to it i almost always was just like let me check and see what song it is and it was platinum so um really well done uh i really dig the chorus in this track i think that is uh just really well done and i also feel like just the harmonies behind it just really hit um i like that this one has again more of less of a, an aggressive tone i think that um both taconic and this one have that sort of softer uh more melodic nature to it and um and it's cool to hear him not kind of go hard as i mentioned in ta taconic um you know i i think it's important for him as a vocalist to not always feel like oh my god i gotta belt something out to kind of convey that message um and he doesn't have to because the vo his voice has just that sort of warmth and 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 power behind it that even if he is kind of singing at a lower register it still really rings uh true and so um you know in a song like this his vocals just really you know hit the pocket super well um and it's just a really well executed track my favorite part is definitely the last chorus i think that's when he truly kind of hits his f true form and um you know i think along with those really beautiful harmonies that were layered up um in that chorus and in the choruses that preceded this one um it just really makes this song unique and powerful and uh i really dug this one so we're gonna move into track number nine which is bliss um 
This one uh, is really good. I think it has kind of a uh, stranger presence to it, especially uh, having more of a like piano focused uh, track, uh, which isn't really bad. Uh, but I think that, you know, again, the usage of piano uh, was really well executed. Um, I think that, again, it has just that stronger presence to it. Um, and especially in the bridge is when you can hear it more notably. Uh, you know, in, in a portion like that, I do like that they're utilizing the piano more. This one feels more so, I would say, kind of closer to like 60 40 or maybe 70 30 in terms of piano. Um, so, you know, again, whoever is playing the piano on this record so far, because I think there was two people that were noted to write piano um, in off-road minivan, and I couldn't really tell the difference between who uh, wrote it. But again, really solid song and definitely one you should go give a check out to. So we're going to move into track number 10, which is Keepsake. Um, the groove is super strong in this track. I really dig this one a lot. Um, kind of similar to how much I kind of like, not kind of like, how much I like Tonic and how it being one of my favorites. Um, I also like the bass in this track. I think that, you know, although I think that the bass, um, I wouldn't say is underutilized just considering how, you know, how important the bass is to, to Tuck in particular and him being kind of the front man of the band, I feel like. You know, he would want his bass lines to kind of stand out where they need be. Um, and I feel like this track in particular has that sort of vibe to it as well. Um, I also really enjoy the kind of burst of energy that this track has. It doesn't feel like, you know, it doesn't feel like some of the, the, the softer songs that have, you know, that, you know, being anywhere from track seven through track nine. Um, they've been definitely more slower songs. Um, so to kind of pick up the energy towards the end of the track is really nice. Um, I like just that it has more of a refreshing energy to it. It doesn't feel like they were just like, oh, well, you know, because the, the, the past couple songs have been a little bit more on the softer side, we need to have more of an aggressive punch. We need to have, it just kind of really works with the whole arrangement and setup of the record. Um, I also feel like instrumentally, this song super tight. It's probably one of my favorites instrumentally as well. I think just the way it's arranged is, is, is awesome. The lead guitar lines are really beautifully, uh, you know, put throughout this entire song in particular. Um, and it has some of my favorite riffs uh, guitar-wise as well. Um, I think that instrumentally, the whole band did a fantastic job. And it just hits a little bit harder when the vocals and kind of the instrumentals line up super well so we're gonna move into track number 11 which is carousel blues um this one is super cool i think this one um especially in the intro with t just tuck and the guitar playing i think that is really uh really really cool and i like how it kind of bleeds into the sort of first verse of this track in particular um the chorus is super tight as well um i really like this sort of structured out uh like like vocal lines and also the vocal melodies i think is just really well executed uh but i would say the most interesting portion of this song is definitely the ending uh it's super dope it's really heavy it gets really like dark and like like melodically interesting as well um it's probably one of the sort of heavier tracks off this record if i mean heavy in quotes um it does have a unique groove to it i think that everybody kind of has a really cool time um you know playing out that outro portion of the song and I would be curious to see how well this translates live. I feel like it would translate out super well. Uh, I feel like it would be most likely a track that they would close a set off with. Um, just because it has that sort of like, like that, like end to a record sort of like vibe to it. So I'd be curious to see how well this one plays out live because it's probably the one of the more interesting tracks off the record and i'm kind of surprised they put it at the end i thought maybe they would kind of swap maybe this track with maybe swan dive or something like that but i think it kind of makes more sense in the confines 
of this record now um because there is a track that ends it out um so i i guess i could understand why this would be in this slot but overall i think this one is probably one of the most unique tracks off the record uh without a doubt i think the way that they especially that last that last ending kind of bridge thing um i think they'd really go off and it, it would be interesting to see them kind of take that concept and maybe put it in either a future ep or like you know a future full length down the line so we're gonna move into track number 12 which is 737 uh i do like this sort of bedroom vibe aspect of this track it does feel like it is like downgraded in terms of recording for a specific reason you know it feels very open there's a lot of bands that i am completely brain farting on that do this sort of thing to close out a record um so i think it's kind of paying homage to you know bands that preceded them and did stuff like this um you know i think it's very cool i like tuck's vocals i think they have this sort of super kind of nice warmth to them um and i also like that his voice kind of almost has this like tad bit of raspiness to it um i think that that is really well done um but overall i think it wasn't too crazy you know again it's just vocals and guitar i believe um so you know again it's not a full band thing to kind of close out the record with um but i think it's a really solid song and i like the sort of uh nostalgia aspect to it so um some pros and cons that i have about the record some pros i think i think tug did a fan i was gonna call him ryan which would be actually correct too but i just i don't know tuck just makes the most sense to me but anyway um i think his vocals were really well done um i think his voice just kind of fits this sort of lane of music and i'd be curious to see going further if he will stop doing vocals for fit for a king i imagine he still will um and i'd also imagine he probably still will be doing those live um but i think his vocals really kind of lend himself more swords this like rock emo indie kind of vibe his voice just really has this beautiful warmth to it um it cuts super well through tracks um his his range is really well done uh, and i would have to say kind of from anywhere from like those like lower register stuff where he's a little bit softer um to you know some of the mo tracks that have more of a soaring chorus like vampire or like swan dive or something like that something where it's a little bit just more aggressive a little bit more punchy um i think he's able to kind of achieve those sorts of things but you know in tracks like taconic and like platinum he's able to take those sort of softer bits and really work work them with his like lower register lower like kind of mid register of vocals and um it's cool to see the diversity amongst his different voice and just the way that he kind of shapes his voice tonality wise um so i really appreciate that i think instrumentally his backing band um is really just awesome i think they do a great job of making it fresh um but not kind of selling themselves short of what off-road minivan is so they find a nice balance between the two which i really appreciate um and i think it is well represented throughout this entire record um i will say one con that i have about it some songs do have a kind of similarity to them and they wind up kind of bleeding into each other um i also think that you know i think that if they had a different kind of like i like the harmonies um but i would be curious to see if maybe somebody else in the band sings and maybe they're able to offer a different tone to their voice um in comparison to tux i think that would be really cool to see something like that um or you know i i think they could switch it up i i really do feel that um i don't think that the voice i don't think that the vocals again by tuck are really bad and i don't think that because he is using his own harmonies in a track that is also bad too i just think from a personal preference standpoint and kind of like a juxtaposition between two different vocalists um you know whether it be kind of like obviously tuck being the main vocalist and having maybe a, a person that does vocals second you know on the secondary sort of side of things uh i think that would make it more interesting and i'd be curious to see how that goes but overall i think basically having you know basically zero knowledge about this band i really enjoyed this record a lot i think it's gonna fly under a lot of people's radars so i'm hoping that people check this out 
and they actually go check out Swan Dive because I think it is one of the, the more underrated records that will be released this year. Um, and it's just really well executed. So if you enjoy like emo, indie, alternative rock music, then uh, this should be right up your alley. So again, my overall rating for Off-Road Minivan Swan Dive, I'm going to be giving it a 9.5 out of 10. I think it's one you should go check out. Um, some of my favorites being uh, Vampire, I would say Spiral Gaze would be another one, uh, Taconic, Platinum, and then lastly to kind of uh, close out the record, I'd say Keepsake and uh, Carousel Blues are definitely up there uh, with my favorite tracks. But let me know in the comments what you think about this record. If you agree with me, if you disagree, I'd love to have a conversation. So drop a comment below if you're interested. Um, if you are unfamiliar with the band, there will be links in the description where you can find out about them. Uh, if they, you know, have anything else that they're releasing soon. Um, if you want to just check out, you know, what they're doing during this quarantine time, I'm sure they'll be posting some stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm really stoked on this record. It's already out now. I think it came out on Friday. Um, so go check it out if you're interested. Huge thanks to Becky over at Big Picture Media for sending this over. And uh, thank you to Off-Road Minivan for allowing me to review your record. I think uh, I'm very stoked to see what this the future has for this band. Um, and, you know, best of luck with the, the next release and uh, what's going on. But uh, if you enjoyed this content... Make sure to share, hit that thumbs up, like it, it goes a long way. Subscribe if you're really interested in what I do. Um, you know, that'd be greatly appreciated and it means the absolute world to me to be able to do some awesome stuff like this. So hopefully I can highlight some more awesome mans and some more album reviews will be coming out hopefully this week. So be on the lookout for those. But like I said, my name is Brandon. We hope you got your fix and we'll be talking with you soon. Peace.